Hey guys, I'm welcome to a new video on this artificial intelligence tutorial. In this video here, we're going to build a neural network from scratch and see. First of all, we're going to actually like cover what is a neural network, what does it consist of and so on. And then we will jump into C code and I'll code a neural network here from scratch. We will train it and then we'll see the results at the end. But first of all, remember to hit the subscribe button and bell notification under the video here. Only 10% of you guys watching these videos here are actually like subscribed to the channel. It's just a single click and just really helps me and the YouTube channel out in a massive way. You can also become a member of the channel if you want to support the channel with a small monthly fee. Also, if you're a member of the channel, I can help you out in your projects. I can give some guidance. I can help you out if you're a member of the channel. So thank you guys. So first of all here, I'm just going to talk about the data that we're going to use. So we're going to train a neural network on using the XOR function. So we want to train a neural network that can predict the output of an XOR uh, logical function. So for example, let's just say here, we're going to write up our data. So here we're just going to choose our pin. Then we just have our data up here at the top. And then we actually want to display or like we want to train a neural network function, like neural network to learn the XOR function. So basically here, we'll just have a couple of inputs for our XR function and we also have a single output. So we're just going to write it up here. And then if we, for example, have two zeros here, we're just going to erase this. If we, for example, have two zeros as our input uh, to our neural network, we can actually just write two zeros. If we have two zeros in our XR function, they will also output a zero. If we have a one and a zero in our input, then the output will be a one. And also if we have a zero and a one, the output will also be a one. But if we have two ones here as an input, we will have a zero here. This is not only the OR logical function, but it's the XOR logical function. So only if one of the two inputs are a one, then the output will also be a one. So this is the data that we want to train our neural network on. We want to pass this into our neural network. Then we want to train a really simple artificial neural network to actually like be able to predict this XOR function here or like learn the XOR function uh, when we're training it over a number of epochs. So basically here, we're just going to create a neural network. Here, we're going to have two inputs. So here, I'll just uh, draw two input nodes. So we're just going to draw them a bit bigger. So here, we'll have two input nodes. We will basically just take these two inputs here and then we'll throw them into our two neurons here. So this will be a two input neurons. And then we'll have another two neurons here in our first hidden layer. So we're basically only going to uh, create a, a single hidden layer. So we're going to draw two neurons here. And then at the end here, we can see that we have one output. So we'll have one output here at the end. So we'll also have a neuron for that output. And that will be this output over here. So when we do a forward pass of our inputs to our neural network by only using these two neurons here with the minimum that we need to actually like be able to learn the XOR function, then we will have a single output here. So basically this is the whole neural network architecture that we're going to act like implement in our, in our C code later on in this video here. But basically here we have the, these five neurons, we have two input neurons and then we have two hidden neurons and then we have an output neuron here as well. So basically here, I'm just going to draw the connection. So we'll have a connection from this neuron to this neuron and also here, so we'll have a fully connected neural network. So basically here, I'm just drawing all these connections that we have and all these connections here are actually like the weights of our neural network. So we have a weight here, we have a weight here, we have a weight for this one here and a weight here. And we will also have it for our hidden hidden layers here or like a hidden neurons in our layer. So basically what we want to do with a neural network also, if you want to know more details, I have plenty of videos about like how neural networks actually like work. We go around like all the theory behind weights, biases, uh, different kind of like activations functions and so on. So definitely check my deep learning and artificial intelligence tutorial out if you want to know more details about like neural network on like a much higher level um, and so on. And then in those videos, we're actually using carriers and TensorFlow and so on to actually like implement neural network uh, for Python and on a higher level. But in this video here, we want to go down to almost the lowest level in computer language, implement and build our own neural network in C code. So here we just have our neural network with these different kind of weights. Then we, when we actually like do a forward pass, we will have values for these neurons. So we have a neuron here, a neuron here. And then we basically just take our neuron and then we just multiply that with our weight. And that, that when we actually do this for the two inputs here, and then we multiply it with the weights. So we're going to use, I'm just going to take another color. So we're going to use this neuron, this neuron, and then we're going to use this weight and this weight. And then we just basically just multiply those values with, with each other, sum them up, and then we pass them through an activation function. And that will be the val value of this neuron here. So basically I'm just going to write it up here at the bottom. So basically we're just going to take the sum and then here we just have I equal to one and then we just run up to N which is equal to the number of neurons in the previous layer. And, and then we actually like also have the weights here for all of these neurons in the previous layer. So basically just have the sum and then we're going to take the weight and then we're going to multiply that 
Uh, then we're going to multiply that with the input. So that will just be an X. So basically here we have this, we could also add a bias. So maybe we can have a bias coming up in here into our neurons. So we can also add a bias here and also a bias. Oh, it's only for this layer. So you can basically just add a bias here. So like for a hidden layer, and you can also add a bias for our output here as well. But we're not going to do that in this video here. We covered that in the other deep learning tutorial. We want, just want to keep this symbol. We just want to learn the XOR function. Uh, so we're only going to use the weights to act like, which is our trainable parameters in our neural network. So then we have basically have this one here. If we had the bias, we're going to also add that after we have summed up all the weights multiplied with our inputs. And then basically here, we just have all the values here that we need to pass through our activation function. So that will just be another parenthesis here. And then we can actually just pass it through our activation function. In this video here, we're going to use the sigmoid activation function. So basically here, A is just equal to sigmoid. And here we, I'll just visualize what sigmoid actually look like because we have different kind of activation functions. We can also use, for example, the ReLU activation function. These are just nonlinear activation functions that we can actually like learn nonlinear stuff in our neural networks. But here we have 0 0.5, we have 0 here, and then we have 1 up here. So basically the sigmoid here, I'll just take another color. It will look something like this and it will go from zero here to up to one. So basically we just have our input values down here at our on our X axis and then the Y axis here will be um, what are we actually like passing through. So th all, of the, all, of the, all of the things here with our weights and our inputs inside of these parentheses will be our X value and then the corresponding Y value, we will get that as the new uh, value for this neuron up here where we have an, an X. So basically when we pass this, these values here through for a sigma function, we will get the next value of the next neuron in our uh, neural network for this hidden layer. And then we can basically just do that for all the neurons and all the weights that we have in our neural network. It is actually like really easy to scale up. You can just use an arbitrary uh, number of like neurons, uh, layers and so on. It will just be four loops that you want to have higher values in. But basically we can also use the value activation function. You can try out that yourself. It's pretty easy. It's basically just like if we have some negative values it will just be a zero. And then if it's a positive value, it will just be the corresponding value or like the same value as we pass through the activation function. So the activation function here can actually like determine if we should fire or we should not fire a neuron here in our neural network. But this is basically the idea here that we want to do. Then we'll get the output out here at the end from our neural network. So this will be our output. And then we can take the output here. We can match it with our X like input. So we can see what our, our label. So this will be a label together with our inputs we pass through. Then we actually just subtract our label here or like our output here from the correct label. Then we can calculate the loss at our neural network here at the output layer. Then we can do back propagation and X like update our weights here for the number of epochs that we're going to train our neural network for. So we're going to jump into Visual Studio code here. I'm going to go into code and build this neural network here from scratch. We're going to write out every line here. Again, I'll upload this to your GitHub after. So you can basically just go down in the description, uh, go into my GitHub and take this code. But here we're just going to write it out so you guys can see like how we can actually like build it from scratch, go line by line so you get a better understanding of like how a neural network is actually constructed and what does it consist of. So here we jump into C, we have act like a C file here open. Again, I have videos about a channel on this channel here about how you can set up a C, C++ environment here in Visual Studio Code. So you can act like um, compile and run your code in VS Code here uh, when you're coding and programming in C and C++. But first of all here, we need to include some different kind of like libraries. So first of all here, we need the standard library. We're just going to close it here. And then we also need to include the STD IO. So here we're just going to have stdio.h and then we also need math. So we need to include the math li uh, library here as well because we're going to use that. So here we're just going to path in math.h. So now we basically have included all the stuff here that we need. So this is again, we don't need a lot. We just need the standard libraries and math. And that is the only thing that we need because we're just building this new larger simple neural network here from scratch. Again here, we'll just write what are we, what are we actually going to create. So we're going to create a symbol a uh, neural network uh, that can learn the XOR function, that can learn XOR. And then we can basically just, we're going to talk about like how we can actually like set up the sigmoid activation function, the stoch stochastic gradient send, how can we do optimization of our neural network, how can we actually like update our weights based on the back propagation that we're going to do. And then we're also going to use some error functions with the mean square error and so on. But first of all here, we want to go down and actually like define our number of inputs and also the number of hidden nodes that we have. 
So first of all, we're just going to define that in our code. So here we just have hashtag define. Then we can define the num of inputs and that will be equal to two because we have two inputs as we saw uh, on the iPad where I actually like visualized what are we going to implement. So again, if you want to know more details, so what we actually like visualized on the iPad is, is basically just the exact same thing here that we're going to implement in code. Then we're also going to define the number of hidden nodes that we have. So num hidden nodes and the number of hidden nodes is also two. And then we're going to define our output nodes here as well. So the hashtag define and then the number of outputs that which will be one. And then we also need to specify the number of training sets that we want to use. In this example here, we're going to use four training sets. You can try to play around with it, but as you're going to see in the, in the end, we will get some pretty good results learning this XOR function here. So here we're just going to pass in num training sets and that will be equal to four as I just said. So now we basically have defined all the things here that we need. So now we can construct our arrays, initialize the weights and so on. And actually like just have our uh, for loop running through all the number of epochs that we want to train our neural network on. So first of all here, we're just going to create our main function. So we have main here and then it will, it will be basically just be void here. And then we need our uh, brackets, our curly brackets. And then we can basically just go in here. First of all, we need to define a learning weight, which we're going to use later on, but we're just going to define it here in the start of our program. So that will be a const double, and then we're just going to call it LR for learning rate, and we're going to set it equal to uh, 0.1 here, and then we're just going to specify that this is a floating uh, value that we're going to use. Uh, but here we can try to play around with this parameter if we want to have our neural network learn faster or slower, depending on if we're able to act like learn what we want it to do. Then we're going to create our arrays with our hidden layers, our output layer, and our input layer. So basically here, we're just going to create a double, a double array, and then we have our hidden layer. So we're just going to call it hidden layer. Then we have our parentheses, and then we're going to, de going to define uh, the size here of our hidden layer. And then will basically just be the number of our hidden nodes that we defined up here above. Then we're also going to create the same thing here for our output layer. So we have output layer. We're going to specify the size of that, and that will just be the number of outputs that we have defined. And then we can go down and actually like create our biases here as well. We can just implement the biases as all, all also visualized um, on the iPad in the start of the video here. So here we're just going to have our hidden layer biases. So that will be hidden layer and then we can call it bias. We're going to initialize it with the number of hidden nodes. And then we can do the exact same thing here. I'll just scroll down here a bit. Then we're going to do the exact same thing for our output layer. We have double uh, this is our output layer bias, and then we're just going to define the length of so number of outputs. Then we go down here and actually like special uh, uh, initialize our weights as well because we want both want to have like a neuron, which is what we have defined up here now, and then we want to have our weights and biases for um, all the different kind of like connections that we have uh, between our actual like neurons. And then when we have done that, we have actually like defined most of what we're going to use throughout this video here. So here we're just going to have a double uh, array again. We're going to define our hidden weights. So we're just going to call that hidden weights. And then we're actually just going to specify the length of that. That will be the number of our inputs. So this will be a two dimensional array for our act like the weights. And then here, the second parameter here, like the second index will be the number of our hidden nodes. So we have two inputs and then we have like two hidden nodes. So we need to add weights between those two. And that is why we have this two dimensional array uh, initialized with our hidden weights. And we're going to have the exact same thing for uh, the weights from our hidden layer to our output layer. So here we're going to have our output weights. And that will be the number of our hidden nodes. And the second one here will be the number of our uh, outputs. So now we have actually like everything defined. We can also just define our training data and our training output. So the labels for our training data. And then when we have done that, we can actually like go in, do a forward pass of our neural network um, and so on act, and act like train it. So basically here, we're just going to and initialize as weights as well because we need, we need to initialize those with random values. But first of all here, we're just going to specify our training data. So we have our training, uh, training inputs. So this will be the input that we throw through our neural network. And that will be the size of our number of training sets number of our training sets and this will be a two dimensional array as well and then the number of our inputs so we have like four training sets and then we have the number of inputs which is two so number of inputs 
Oops, did I write something wrong? No num inputs. Like this. Here we go. And then we can actually just specify it, uh, the values right here. So we're just going to have a training set and then we can just shuffle that later on because we actually like only have four of these cases. So for our training set, we only have like these four values for our XOR as I showed you on the iPad as well. So we're going to create a two dimensional array. We just have 0, 0 0.0 and a floating value. And we have the same one here for the second input. And then we can basically just do this over and over again for uh, the exact same thing as I did in um, in the in the iPad. So here we have a one and a zero, and we have floating value, comma a zero, uh, zero floating, and then we're going to do the exact same thing. We can just go down here, create another array, and then we have a zero point zero floating value, and then we have one point zero floating value, and then we need the last one here, which is two ones. So we have here, and then we have the last one here, floating value. So that should be it. And then we can actually just go down and, and specify our um, our labels for this training data. So when we have this one here, we can basically just go down. I'll just copy paste this one here. It will take space, save some time. So here we're just going to copy paste it and then we can have our training outputs, which will, will be our training labels. And that will also be the number of the training set and number of our outputs. So we only have one uh, output. So the number of our outputs, and then we only have one value here. And as we can see here, we will have a zero and then we have a one and then we have a one here. And then because we're using an XOR, uh, we will have a zero in the last one here. So this will still be our training data and this should be, uh, this should be our um, labels for training data. And then we can always just shuffle them around so we get some uh, randomized stuff and so on when we're actually like training our neural network. So this is the objective that we want to learn. We want to learn the XOR function. So this is again, this is really fairly uh, easy or like simple. It's not easy. It's a simple pro uh, s s like sort kind of like project or um, thing to solve. So here we're just going to go back and then we can actually like go in initialize our weights. So first of all, we need to create a function that can initialize our weights. So we'll just go up at the top and do that. We will just initialize the functions up here. So we have a double and we'll just call that init weights. And here we're not going to pass anything into our constructor or like to our uh, arguments for a function here, we can just return, then we're going to use some random values. So here we can just specify that we want to return, then we need parentheses here, and then we want to return a double, double uh, here like this. And then we just take a random number from the math library that we're going to use. And then we're going to actually like just, I think we need this parentheses here, and then we need to divide that by uh, the num like the random maximum number that we have. So here we just specify double inside of these parentheses, double, oops, double, and then we just cut it off here. And then we basically just take the range max, uh, which is defined. So here we should have everything. Maybe we shouldn't have, uh, we should have rand like this. We should have double like this. Here we have two, we have the return. I'll just do like this. And double here, we should only have one parenthesis here. And then we'll end it like this. And then we basically have our, um, then we need semicolon here to end it off. And then we basically have our function to initialize a weight. So when we call this function, we'll just initialize random numbers between uh, zero and one. And then we just initialize our weights uh, with that. So basically now we have our function to initialize the weights. We just take random numbers, initialize the weights with random numbers. And then over time, our, over the number of epochs, when we're training a neural network, then we will like, like update these weights here. So we go away from random numbers. So in the start, we won't be able to predict anything or like learn the XOR. But over time, when we pass through our da training data with the labels, then we will over time and over a number of epochs, we will learn this XOR function and adjust these uh, weights here in our neural network. So now when we have this function here, we can just code our sigma function and the derivative of our sigma function, which we're going to use for backward propagation. So here we're just going to, first of all, we're just going to define our sigmoid function. So that will take a double X. So that will take our value X value, which is the sum of our weights multiplied with our inputs. And then we add our bias as well. So that will be the value here that we pass into our sigma function. And that will just return the sigma function. You can look it up on Google um, and so on if you want to know that, but it is basically just uh, this function here that we're going to use. Um, so this is one divided by one plus uh, one plus the exp exponent of 
the negative value that we have. So that is our X value. And then we basically just have the sigmoid function um, as we can see here. So this is the function for our sigmoid function that we drew in our visualization as well. We're going to just copy this here and then we're going to take the derivative of our sigmoid function. So we can basically have that when we're going to update our weights uh, when we do back propagation. So that will be our D sigmoid for derivative. And then we, again, we just pass in our X value. And then here we actually just have an X. So we're just going to uh, delete this one here. And then we just have X multiplied with one minus X. So this is basically just the derivative of our sigmoid function. So here we're just going to have this. So now we have all the functions defined that we're going to use. We actually like we also need a shuffle function. So I talked about when we have our data set, we want to shuffle it when we actually like train our neural network. Uh, so it learns faster. And also when we do stochastic gradient descent, we need to shuffle our data set. So basically here, I'm just going to route out this function here. It's not really that important for like the understanding of like how can we create a neural network or like to build a new neural network from scratch. But basically here, we just pass in an array here, which will be the data set that we want to shuffle. So here we're just going to create a reference to our array. So we actually like shuffle array, so we don't make copies. We'll just take our array in, shuffle the data inside of that array, and then we just uh, use that array for our training. We also need to pass in the size t here, so the size of our uh, training data. So we have size t n. And then we're basically just going to route out the function here for shuffling the data. So we say if n, if n is greater than one, then we're just going to have these curly brackets. Then we can specify here size t for i, and then we can basically just have a for loop running through, uh, running through our array, taking random indexes and then shuffling our data around. So basically here, we're just going to create a for loop and then for a for loop, we have i equal to one or like i equal to zero. And then we have i as long as i is less than n minus one. So n is the size of our data set. And then we can basically just have uh, increment i here at the end in our for loop. Then we have a for loop. Now we're just going to specify or like we're actually going to create the random indexes. And then we can just specify or like set those random indexes to the new indexes in our data set. And then in that way, we're actually like shuffling our data. So first of all, here we have size t uh, of j, and that will be equal to i plus some random value. So we're going to have rand, and then we're going to call the rand function. So the rand function, we're going to divide that by rand max as we already did up in the in the weights initialization with our random weights. So here we're going to have rand max, and then we're going to divide that by n minus i, and then we're just going to add a one to that at the end here. So it will be here, and then we have an n parentheses, and then we're going to have a semicolon to end off this line of code. So now we actually have the, the random index of our of our array, so we can actually like shuffle our data. Then we can go down and create an, a t here, so that will be the index of our array. So we can just take our array and take the j index. So that will be the index that we just calculated or like the random index up here. And then this it, this array here will actually like be our data or like the index up to our data. And then we can just go in and shuffle that data, take their index of the array. And, and then like we take this t value here and then we just like shuffle our data by taking another index or like we take this index in our original array uh, and just overwrite our data so we didn't shuffle it. So here we're just going to take our array of the j uh, element, and then we're going to set that equal to array of the i element. So that will be the, the original el uh, element or like the original index. And then at the end here, we're going to set our array of i equal to t, which is the index that we had up here or like the value that we had up here, integer that we had up here. So now we actually have our shell function. This is all we need to do, which basically just pass in our array. We shuffle our data, we just randomly shuffle our data. So now we have everything, we can go down and actually like build our neural network from scratch here. So this is all we need to set up these different kind of things. So now we can go down, initialize the weight, actually like do the forward pass uh, program and code the forward pass here. When we're done the forward pass, we can then like code our backward propagation and then we can train our neural network to see if we're actually like able to learn the XOR function. So first of all here, we're just going to initialize a weight. So we just have a for loop here of int uh, i equal to zero. And then we have i going to the number of our inputs. So we have specified that to be equal to two. And then we're just going to increment i here. So we have i plus plus. And then we're going to have these curly brackets. We're actually going to have two for loops because we know that we have a two dimensional array for our uh, weights. So when we're going to initialize those, 
So here I'm just going to copy paste this for loop and then we're going to have J and that will run up to the number of our hidden nodes. So this is basically just how we're going to index uh, these arrays that we initialized up here. So we basically just have a for loop running through all like the, the training sets. And then after that, we have the on number of, oh, not, not up here. We'll have the hidden weights and also the output weights up here uh, that we're going to iterate through. So this is a two dimensional array. And then here we can just have J uh, plus plus curly brackets. And now we can actually like initialize our weights. All, we have already initialized our weights or like we have uh, defined the, um, the size of array. So we can basically just go in here, our hidden weights. So this is the weight that we want to initialize. And then we have i, the i-th index and the j-th index. And then we want to set that equal to init weight. Oops. Init weights. And we don't pass anything into that. We will just like um, define, um, we just define an init weight. So basically we're just, uh, we're basically just returning a single value, a single a random value. And then we just set each of our weights equal to that random value. So we're just initializing weights with random values. We're going to do the exact same thing here for our output weight. So we're going to just um, copy this for loop. So and then we have the number of inputs. So now it will be the number of our hidden nodes. And then, then here we, it will be the number of our outputs. And then we can basically just have our output weights down here. Output weights. So now we're just going to initialize our output weights with some random weights here as well. We're going to do the exact same thing for our bias. But here we only need a single for loop because we only have like one dimensional array for our biases. So what biases here will be the number of our outputs. And here we can see we have J. So that will just be I. We're just going to change this here to I. And then we can go down and then we have our output weights, which will be our output layer bias. And we set that i th element equal to uh, a random weight. So now we've both initialized our weights for our hidden layer, our output layer, and also the biases that we're going to do. Then we can go down, specify the training set order. So down here, we're just going to have an integer, uh, an integer array. So we have our training set order, and then we can just shuffle that order uh, uh, when we actually like want to create our new network or when we want to shuffle our data. So here we're just going to create an array with these indexes, one, two, three, four. Oh, not four, we just want a zero because we have to serve index. So like this, and then we're going to end it off. And then we want to specify the number of epochs. So now we're actually like going to implement uh, our training loop here. So we just have our integer here, the number of episodes or like number of epochs that we want to train our neural networks for and that will be equal to let's just say 10,000 we can play around with that parameter and see what works best and now we can actually like train our neural network here create our training loop so we're just going to uh, create a comment for that so train the neural network network for and number of epochs so now we are just going to create a for loop we have our in epoch our epoch will be equal to zero to start off with and we run that as long as our epochs is less than the number of epochs that were specified up above and then we're just going to increment our epochs here um, at the end of so epoch plus plus we have the curly brackets and this will be a whole uh, training loop here that we're going to implement inside of this one so first of all here we need to ask as per std we need to shuffle the order of our training set so we're going to use the shuffle function now and this will only be epoch so here we're just going to call our shuffle function. We start off with shuffling our data. So we have our training set order that we just specified or like we just initialized up here. And then the second parameter will be the number of training sets that we have. And then it is basically just going to shuffle our data set. So we'll just go in and index our training set with this array up here. So now we have shuffled our data. Now we can actually go down and cycle through each of the elements in our set. So we have four elements in our set. We're just going to cycle through that. And then we do a forward pass of our neural network. We do a backward pass and so on. And then the whole data set is actually like only four values. And then we're just training it for a number of epochs. So here we're just going to create another for loop. So we have four X. So we're just going to call that for X or like for int X equal to zero. And then we're going to have X as long as X is number uh, less than number uh, number of uh, training sets, so num training sets, and then we're just going to increment our x value here. 
So first of all here we have our index for our training set order. So we have i equal to our training set order. And then we're just going to take the x index. So basically here we just have our i here that we can then use later on. So here we're just going to cycle through each of the elements in our set, in our training set to be correct. So basically here, we now we can create our forward pass. So now we have everything. We can just create a comment here with our forward pass. So now we're going to implement the code for doing forward pass in our neural network. So we have forward pass. And then first of all, we need to compute, we need to compute the hidden layer activation. So this is exactly, so what we're going to implement now is exactly what I visualized on the iPad later on or in the start of the video. So here we have activation. Then we have a for loop again. We have a for loop from int j equal to zero. And as long as j is less than the number of our hidden nodes, uh, hidden nodes. And then we're just going to increment our j value. And then we can basically just go in and create our um, value for our activation. So we're going to create a double for our activation. And then we set that equal to our hidden layer bias in layer bias of the jth element so basically we're just going to to set our first of all our bias here equal or like our activation equal to our bias and then we're just going to uh, multiply or we're just going to add our x like weights multiply with our inputs later on so we have actually like already added our biases to our activation before we pass it through our activation function um, at the end of this for loop here so here we're going to just going to create another for loop we have int k equal to zero and then we have the k, as long as k or k on less than which is the number of our inputs and then we're just going to increment k so k plus plus and then we can basically just go down here and multiply or like add our activation for each of the training inputs and also for our weights in our first hidden layer so here we have activation let's just see what is wrong here um, nothing should be wrong so we have activation plus equal to our training inputs so we're going to in check our training inputs of the i element and also the j element so basically the i element will be the training set order up here uh, that we have so that will basically be our uh, training data so this will be the index to our training data that we're going to use and the, here we're just going to specify that index for our training inputs and then the j value here we just want to run through all of that for the hidden number of hidden nodes that we have so here we just have i and j element uh, element here oh it's not j it's the k element so we have k inside of this for loop here uh, so this is the number of our inputs so we need like the number of inputs and then the, the act like data that we have because we know that we have inside of each data point here or like each data array we have two values which is why we want to run k uh, as long as it's, it's less than the number of our inputs so now we basically have this one here we just need to multiply it with our hidden weights so here we have our hidden weights and then we're going to take the index for those corresponding um, hidden weights that we have in our new network. So here we're going to end it off. Now we actually like have our activation. We can end this for loop. Let's just see what I did wrong here. So basically, oh, we need a semicolon up here. So now our for loop is good. And then we're going to actually like go down here and add our, our activation here. We can pass that through our sigma function and then we can update our hidden layer uh, our hidden layer uh, neuron uh, values. So here we're going to have to have our hidden layer and then we're going to take the j element. So this will be the number of our hidden nodes, which is equal to two. So we're going in and update each of our individual neurons in our hidden nodes. We go in and set that equal to sigmoid. So we call the sigmoid function that we created. And then we're just going to pass the activation that we have calculated up here above. So that will be our input multiplied with the weights in our hidden layer plus the bias that we have for our hidden layer as well. We pass that through our sigma activation function and then we will actually like get a value for the new neuron in this layer here in our hidden layer and we just specify that with the J element. So now we actually like have our hidden layer activation. Then we can go down and do the exact same thing and compute our output layer activation. So basically we're just going to copy paste this code and do the exact same thing for our output activation. So down here, compute output output activation here we're going to specify the number of outputs so that will also just be j here we have the activation then we need to specify uh, we still need j here and then for the k value that will be the number of our uh, hidden nodes num 
hidden notes. We still have K. Then we also have our training. So that will not be our training inputs anymore because we will take the like the inputs to our output layer will be the, will be the outputs from the hidden layer. So now we're not operating with our inputs anymore. Now we're operating with the outputs from the previous layer. So now instead of our uh, training inputs here, we will have our hidden layer, hidden layer of the cave element. Here we have the cave element. We we'll multiply multiply that with our output output weights. So we have our output weights, and then we take the cave and also the JF element in our output weights. So this will be a lowercase p. So here we have our output weights, and when we just take the element, we multiply that with our input from uh, or like the output from the previous layer. We add that to our activation. We already have our hidden layer biases up here, so this will not should not be the hidden layer output. It should be the output layer bias. So now we have the bias for our output layer. Again, we have our activation. We pass that through our sigma function, and then we are updating our output layer. So our output layer here of the JF element, but the output here would only be uh, a one because we only have one near and here for our output. So this will be a single value in our array. But now we actually have everything. Now we can pr print the results for our forward pass. So we're just going to have a print F statement here. P R E I N T F. And then we're just going to basically, basically just print out what is the input to our neural network, what is the output, and what is the expected output from doing a forward pass. So this will act like be our prediction of our neural network. So I'm just going to write that out. So here we're going to have our input, and that will be here. We need um, a percentage uh, symbol here, and then we need a T. So basically, we're just going to take the shortest form of the data data type here that we have, and then we also have our output. I'm just going to make some spaces. We have our output, and here we have a colon, and then we also need to specify t when you want just want the shortest format for our actual like outputs or like for the inputs and the outputs. We just have a one or a zero, so we just want that to be uh, like to display. And then we also have the expected output here, or like the predicted output. I'll rather call it predicted output. Predicted output, and that will also be a g in this example. And then here at the end, before we end it off, we're just going to make a new uh, new line. Then we have a, can have a comma, and then we can actually like specify the training inputs that we have, and also the training like the training inputs, our output, and also the expected output. So we have our input, we have our label, and then we have the um, expected output or like our predicted output from our model. So we have our training uh, training inputs training inputs and then we're just going to take the i element of that and then we take the zero element because we just want to have first training input we're going to copy paste this here because we also want this second training input so that will be the first element and then we're going to have our output layer i'll just scroll down a bit so you guys can see what is going on then we have our output layer and then we have the zero element of that which will basically just be our expected output or like our uh, predicted output. So we have an output layer of the zero element. And then we also want to have our training outputs. So our actual like correct labels. So we have our training outputs. We have the i element and then we have the zero element here as well. So now we have everything. Now we're going to print the, the forward, forward pass results when we're actually like going to run the code here later on. So now we're going to code our back propagation before we can actually like run our code, see if our neural network is actually like able to learn the XOR function. So here we're just going to do our back propagation. So basically when we have done a forward pass, we get an output and then output that output value, we can match that with our true label or like our label for the input that we pass through our neural network. And then we can calculate the error. We can use that error to actually like do back propagation. We can take like the partial derivative of our of a loss with respect to each of the individual weights in our neural network, then we can propagate that back uh, through our the layers in our neural network, and then we can update the weights. So this is actually like how neural networks are learning. Again, check out my tutorials here on the on the channel to learn more about like how neural networks like actually like learn, what are the optimizers, how can we use them, and so on. Like I go way more into details about the theory and so on in those videos. So definitely check that out if you're interested in it. So here, first of all, we need to compute the change in our output weights. So here, compute change in output weights. So now we're basically just going to update our weights. We're just going to back propagate throughout uh, our neural network or like back in our neural network. 
So first of all here we need to uh, initialize our delta output so that will just be another array so that will just be the change in our output weights so we have a double here delta output so this will be our actual like error and that will correspond to the number of outputs that we have so that will only be one in this example so this will basically just be a single value and here we just have a semicolon and then we can have a follow loop actually like running through all our predictions and our training set and then we can calculate the error so here we can basically just have a for loop. So we just have a for loop. Oops, we got this one here. So we basically just have a for loop. And then we have int j equal to zero. And then we have j uh, less than the number of our outputs. Less than our outputs. And then we just increment k j. We're going to have our curly brackets and then we're going to calculate our act like error. So that will be our error, error here. And then we set that equal to our training outputs. Our training outputs of the i i element and also the j element, and then we basically just subtract that with our act like output layer. So our prediction from our neural network. So that will be our j index in our output layer. So this will be the true label. And then we here we have our act like prediction of our neural network. We just subtract that from each other to get the actual like error of our neural network. So then we can set our delta output here. So we can set our delta. Uh, oops, up here we need a semicolon. So here we have our delta output uh, of the jth element, and then we just set that equal to our error, and then we just multiply that with the derivative of our sigma function, and then we just pass in our prediction to that derivative of our sigma function. So here we have d sigma, we call that d sigma, and then we basically just pass in our prediction to our derivative of our sigma function. That will be our output layer of the j element so now we actually like have the the change in our output weights here for our output layer and then we should just do the exact same thing here for our hidden weights or like for a hidden weight update those and so on and then we can actually like apply the, those updates later on when we're going to do the optimization step with stochastic uh, stochastic uh, stochastic gradient descent so here we're going to have our delta for our hidden layer so we're going to have delta hidden just going to specify the number of hidden nodes. So here I'm just going to make a comment so you know like what is going on. So here we compute the change, like compute change in hidden weights. I'm just going to scroll down a bit so you can see what is going on. And then we can basically just have a for loop again as we just did up above. We have j equals zero as long as j is less than the number of our hidden nodes. And then we just increment j. Just need an int here. And then we can basically just calculate our error again. So that will be a double an error and that will be equal to 0, 0.0, a floating value. Um, because we're actually just going to multiply that with our output weights and so on. So we actually have a number of outputs we want to pro back propagate through that. So we actually just go from the last layer to the, to, the, to the second last layer and so on until we get to our input layer. So here we basically just have another for loop that we need to run because we actually have these uh, double indexes in our output weights. So here we're going to have another for loop which is k in k equal to zero. And then we have k less than the number of our outputs and then we just increment our k value now we have the for loop we're going to have our curly brackets and now we can actually like apply our uh, error here or like add to our error so we have our error which will be plus equal to our delta output so our delta output here is it is of the k element so our delta output is act like what we just calculated up here above so it is the change in our output weights and here to be able to change to calculate the change in our hidden weights we need to take the output weights into account or like the change in the output weights into account so here we're just going to multiply that with our output weights output weights of the j element oops of the j element and also of the k element so like this and then we can end our for loop here and then we can actually like have our delta hidden of the j element and then we can update that with our act like error multiply that with our derivative of our sigma function 
with the outputs or like with the inputs or like with the values from the previous layer so that will be our uh, hidden layers so up here we have the output layer we take the, the act like the predictions of our output layer down here we need to take it off our hidden layer so we have a derivative of our sigmoid function so down here we have the sigmoid and then we basically just pass in the hidden layer and then we take the chief element so this is basically just outputs or like inputs or the values for the neurons in our hidden layer that we pass through our derivative of our sigma function so now we can actually like now we have updated or like we have computed the change in our output weights and also in our hidden weights and now we can actually like apply those changes to our weights when we're going to do that we actually like want to do all and use the learning rate so we take don't take like too large of a, uh, of a step when we're actually like updating our weights in our neural network and training our neural network so here we're going to apply the changes in our in, in our output weights so apply change in output weights and here we're just going to have another follow we have int j equal to zero and and as long as j is, is less than the number of our output so this will basically be the same as up here that we just had but we're just going to write it out again and then we're just going to increment j with one for every four loop iteration then we're going to have our curly brackets and then we can actually like just apply those weights that we have calculated so our output bias layer weight bias here so we both need to update the bias and also the weights in our neural network so we're going to take the jth element of our biases then we're going to plus equal to our delta output so our delta output so the change in our output we take the jth element of that and then we multiply that with the learning rate or like the step size that we want to take when we're training our actual like neural network here then we have another for loop updating our weights so we both need to update our bias and also the weights and we're both using the delta outputs uh, for updating both of those so here we're going to have another for loop we have uh, for uh, k for int k equal to zero and we have k uh, less than the number of our inputs or like not not the inputs here we have the number of our hidden notes so number of our hidden notes and then we're just going to increment k. We have our curly brackets, and then we can actually like write our and, and apply the updates to our output weights. So here we're just going to take our output weights. I'm just going to scroll down a bit so you can see what is going on. We have our output weights of the kth element and also the jth element here, uh, because we just want to take each of the individual um, weights, and then we just want to update those. We have plus equal to. Because these changes here can actually like both be positive and negative, so that's why we're just using like uh, plus equal to. Then we have a hidden layer, so this will be the hidden layer k, and then we just multiply that with our delta output that we computed, and then we'll take the jth element of that, multiply that with a learning rate, so we take a step size again. So now we actually have it. We have our applied our change here to our output weights. We can just copy paste this code and do the exact same thing for our hidden weights, and then we have actually like done the back propagation. Uh, we have done the forward pass, calculated the error at the end of the neural network, done uh, calculated the changes in our weights, so the change in the output weights and also the the, um, the hidden weights by actually like using the error, back propagating the error throughout the layers, and then we actually like just apply uh, that change that we have calculated. So down here again, we have just copy pasted this. Again, we have J, but now we have the number of our hidden layers, so number of hidden nodes, not layers. Then we have j plus plus then here we have not our output and we don't have our output of layer we have our hidden layer oops hidden layer and then we have still have our we don't have our delta output we have our delta hidden and then instead of the output we have hidden weights and here instead of notes again again we just go backwards so this will be our input now so the number of our inputs and this will be delta uh, hidden as well Again, we still take a learning rate. We have hidden here. So now we basically have everything. Now we have done it to our hidden layer weights as well. To apply the change in the hidden weights. So this is everything that we need to do. Now we can actually just create another if print uh, here to actually like visualize what are our different kind of like weights, what are our final weights of the training, what are the final biases and so on. And then we can actually like train a new network. We can just run the code here for 10,000 episodes or like 10,000 epochs here. And then we can actually like see how it learns over time. So we can actually like see what it predicts, what should be the true label, and so on. So let's just write out 
uh, the different kind of like outputs here. I'm just going to write them out and then we're going to run the program. So before we're going to run the code here, I actually just found an error. So here, when we applied the chains to our hidden weights, we actually have our hidden layer here. Instead, it should be our act like our inputs or like our uh, training inputs. So that will be our training inputs. And then we need to take the ith element. And then we also have the k element still. We multiply that with our delta hidden. And then we can actually like just multiply that with our learning rate here as well. So this is how we can update our weights in our hidden layer. So now we can basically just run our code here and see how our neural network here acts like performance when we're training it here for 10,000 epochs. So now we're just going to compile a code and act like run it. So here we're just going to run it in Visual Studio Code. So first of all here we can see our final hidden weights. So these will be the weights for our final hidden layer and our final hidden biases will be these two values. We also have the weights in our output output layer which will be these two different kind of weights and then we also have a bias here in our output layer up here at the top we can actually see the outputs from all the four passes that we have done for the 10,000 epochs that we had so here we can actually just see both the inputs and also the outputs we will just go up to the start of the program or like to the start of our epochs so basically here in the start we can just see we get some random values First of all, we have our input. We have two ones, which will should be a zero. We have a one and a zero. That should be a one, a zero, one, a one, and one, one should also be a zero. Two zeros should also be a zero. So this is the xdoll function. Here we can see the output from a neural network in, in the start. We just have random initial weights. So we need to actually learn. So here we have an output of point like around 50. So this is not a really good output when we actually pass in zero and one as our input. We're not even, we're not able to actually predict any values close to either like zero and one, but the expected output will would be at one. We can also see down here two ones here. Output again, we have around like 56 here, 0.56 for our predicted output, and expected output should be one again. These values are not anything near uh, close to the expected output. But when we scroll down here, we can see that we actually like, get like larger values or we get values closer to the actual like ground truth i'll just scroll more down here at the bottom so for all of these values here we actually have a forward pass so we pass through like for example like a, a set here a data set our whole data set which is four um four arrays so we pass that through that will be one uh, epoch that we are actually like training on neural network four but when we just scroll down here and see the training process we can see that we actually like get some values closer to zero so we get closer and closer to zero for our expected output of zero and also for ones we also get closer uh, to our true one but when we just scroll down we should actually like just get better values uh, the further we scroll down and at the bottom of our program we should actually like be able to calculate and act like predict the correct scores so here we can see again the ones we're up here at now like around 0.66 values for our expected one outputs and if we just scroll down further we can see that now we get some 0 0.0 like 0 0.20 values where our expected uh, output will actually like be zero. So we're getting closer, we're getting closer to actually like learning this XOR function with a neural network. If we just scroll down further, we should actually like just get better and better results uh, while a neural network is training. I'll just scroll down to the bottom so you can see the final results. But here we can see we get an input zero of one, the output is 0 0.90, around like 95. And they expect the output is one. So this is actually like really close to the expected output that we had from a neural network this is close to the value we can just round it up and then we can act like expect and then we can act like predict the correct value for these two inputs here by only having two neurons in our hidden layer again here we have two zeros as input we predict zero like point zero five as the as the output value here and the expected output is zero we don't really predict like just clear one and zeros but these values here are very very close uh, to the expected output value so these are basically just we just have a small error of around like five five percent but it doesn't really matter when we have like this kind of like binary uh, binary output for a neural network again we only have two hidden neurons this is the the minimum that we need to actually be able to create this xor function if you had more neurons you could actually like, get a result closer to this one here you can just go up and specify more neurons in the number of hidden neurons that were defined at the top of our program 
if we just scroll down to the bottom we can see that we get some values around like point point zero four now point point ninety five six and so on if we scroll down to the bottom again we can see we don't really get get any closer but here we can also see the final weights the final biases the final output and and final output weights and so on so you can store those uh, arrays here in files if you just want to like for example save your neural network so now we have trained a neural network here in C then you can actually like just store these values here you can load them in later on again and then you can just like do new predictions with the neural network you don't need to train it any longer so you will just end up with these different kind of like two dimensional arrays these arrays here that you can store and then you have actually like trained a neural network so this is actually like a really cool video um, i'm really excited for it it, it is a really nice neural network it's, it's too cool that we can create neural network from scratch and see you can scale this up you can just like add the number of, of inputs that you have you can create your own data you can try some like sinusoidal signals and so on and try to do predictions with that you can just increase the number of outputs that we have decrease the number of hidden layers you can even like create multiple hidden layers you can just go up and define it in the top of this code so this code here is actually like pretty scalable you can try to play around with it try to implement some other activation functions optimization functions and so on how are you updating the neural networks try to like try to like act like create some functions where you can load in the weights load in the biases so you can actually like just have some like some kind of like loading and saving the neural networks that you have trained so it's easy to like switch to another system and so on and also when you have trained neural network one time then you can just use it over and over again and just use it for inference but thank you guys for watching this video here and remember to hit the subscribe button and bell notification under the video and also like this video here if you like the content and you want more in the future i'm definitely going to create more videos about like neural networks try to do some of these things that we can that we just talk about about like what can we improve with this program because it's actually really exciting implementing these things here in c down in low level programming and you guys can also benefit a lot from it because you get a better understanding of like how a neural network is actually like built from the bottom up instead of just using like Keras and TensorFlow, um, PyTorch and so on, those frameworks, which is just like basically just calling functions and then you can create neural networks, but this gives you a better understanding. But if you want to know more details about like these frameworks and also what like, for example, the optimizers are doing, uh, activation functions and so on, I have all the theory about deep learning and neural networks on my video, on my channel here. So if you're interested in that tutorial, I'll link to it up here or else I'll see you next video guys. Bye for now.